In today's lesson, we will use rectangles to determine congruency. Your learning target says, I can determine if two shapes are congruent through a series of transformations, which will map the images together. Below is a picture of rectangle ABCD with diagonal AC. I want you to draw this on your piece of graph paper, noticing, of course, that it is eight units long and four units wide. And then once you've done that, I want you to pay attention to triangle ACD. I want you to rotate that rectangle around the pivot point, which is vertice D, 180 degrees. The image will have A prime, C prime, and then D will be your pivot point, so that's not going to change. Go ahead and pause me while you do that and come back when you're ready for checking. So your paper should look approximately like this right now. I had to draw over my lines. They weren't very dark when I took the picture, so I drew over the top of them. And I want you to notice triangle A prime, C prime, D, which is this one. And triangle ACD, which is this one. Now, if I wanted to prove that these two were congruent, I could simply rotate it back 180 degrees the other way. But let's figure out a different way to map A prime, C prime, D onto triangle ACD, making sure A and A prime match up and C and C prime match up. So I want you to think this through. You can use rotations, translations, reflections, a combination of them. How could you get the red triangle to map directly and precisely on top of the black triangle? Come back when you have a plan. Here's what I thought might work. First, I want to reflect over C prime D. So I'm going to take my red triangle and I'm going to reflect it down over that line. And now it's going to be approximately right here. And then I want to reflect over this line. And it will land directly on top with my A and my A prime matched up and my C and my C prime matched up. Now there could be more than one answer, but that's the answer I came up with. You might have a different one that's equally good. We are going to continue to use these rectangles. And so I want you to pay attention again to A, A prime, C prime, D. So that is this triangle right here. And now I want you to pay attention to triangle CAB, which is this one. And using a series of transformations, I want to see if you can map A prime, C prime, D prime, or the red triangle directly on top of CAB or the black triangle. You can use rotations, reflections, translations, or a combination of them. So get a plan, um, pause me while you're working, and when you're ready to see what my plan is, come back. So first what I thought of is I thought that we could take this red triangle and move it 8 to the right and then move it 4 down. And that would put the red triangle directly on top of the black triangle and I thought I was good. But then I noticed my corners. A prime is sitting on top of C and C prime is sitting on top of A. And I thought I had a failure until I looked at it a little more closely. When I rotated this, my angles became different. So in other words, there's two angles here that make up angle A. There is a bigger one and a smaller one. And there's two angles here that make up angle C, a bigger one and a smaller one. And when I rotated those, those became flipped. And so this is the best I'm going to be able to do to show that triangle A prime C prime D is congruent to CAB. 
let's continue to prove congruency, but now let's use two different rectangles. I actually have a copy of this, so if you want a hard copy, come and see me. Your task is to explain how would you show that the rectangles are congruent using a translation followed by a rotation. Go ahead and pause me while you get a plan, and when you're ready, come back and see what my plan is. So here's what I came up with. I thought I could translate rectangle 1, x minus 6, y plus 5, or 6 to the left and 5 up. And so I drew my new rectangle. Notice that I have a shared vertice that I put a star by. Then I feel like I want to rotate around that shared star vertice. And that's not one that we know, so I'm going to estimate that that's about 45 degrees counterclockwise. Now I'd love to hear if you came up with something different because I'm sure this is not the only answer. Think about the following question and then explain why the congruence of the two rectangles cannot be shown simply by translating rectangle 1 onto rectangle 2. Pause while you formulate your answer and come back and see what I thought. Here's what I was thinking. If you look at rectangle 1, the sides of rectangle 1 will always be parallel to the grid lines, while rectangle 2 never will have that. And so a translation is only going to shift it. It's never going to turn it. And so a pure translation will never map rectangle 1 onto rectangle 2. Now think about this one. I want you to explain. Can the congruence of the two rectangles be shown with a single reflection? Why or why not? Think about what your answer is and pause me while you formulate that and then come back when you're ready to see what I thought. So here's my answer. I say no. And the reason I say no is that the vertices will be mapped onto non-corresponding vertices. By definition, a reflection is going to give you a mirror image, and so those vertices will be mirror images of themselves and never map correctly.